Welcome to the sixth video in my FPS character controller tutorial series. The full playlist link and GitHub source code link will be below in the description. In today's video I just wanted to show a couple quick methods that I have found to allow the character body 3D to interact with rigid bodies. If you try to push rigid bodies with the character body 3D nothing will happen because the character body 3D doesn't actually have any mass. This is unlike regular rigid body 3Ds which you can set the mass in kilograms on them. This is because character body 3Ds are really just meant to be moved in code by you directly and they don't take part in the physics simulation the same way. So if when you move your character body 3D in code you also want it to affect surrounding rigid bodies you'll have to program that in directly. First I'm going to show you a very quick method that doesn't require any code and is really easy but is a little bit limited. So in the collision tab of these rigid body 3Ds that I have selected, you'll notice that there's a layer option and a mask option. And they are both set to 1 right now. And same with the player. They are on physics collision layer 1 and physics mask 1. And so all I have to do to get the player to be able to push them around is to move them onto another layer. So I have them on layer 2, so they are not going to collide with the player's mask layer. And now because the weights layer does not collide with the player's mask layer, the character body 3D is basically not going to be able to see these weights in the physics simulation, and it's just going to plow right through them as if they aren't even there. But the weights mask layer is still set to 1, which is the player's layer. So they can still see the player and they react to the player. Note, I only set the mask on the weights to 1, so they don't react with each other, which are all on layer 2. Only when a given object's layer overlaps with the object's mask will it interact with it. Now that I've turned the weights to mask on the same layer as the other weights, they are able to interact with each other. You could even have something on no collision layers. And as long as the appropriate mask layers are on, it will be able to interact with all objects on those layers. But otherwise it will be like a ghost and it will be able to affect absolutely nothing, so it's just like kind of floating and getting pushed around by everything. And the big limitation here is that obviously you don't want to push around 10,000 kilogram blocks like they're nothing if you're a character in your game. So this method will only be useful for certain things like small props you want to push around easily. For the middle ground where you have objects that are light enough to push but not light as a feather, I'm going to share a small function that I have to do this. It's not perfect but this is the best method I've found to get some half decent rigid body 3D and character body 3D interactions. You should be able to pretty easily slot it into any character body 3D script that you have. Um, and all that we're going to do is just loop through all the collisions and apply an impulse or a velocity based on that object's mass and the character body 3D's current velocity. And you should call this function right before move and slide in your character body 3D script. And like I said, link is in the description. If you want to copy paste this, it should work in any character body 3D script. Uh, but I will explain it here. And so basically what we're going to do is just iterate through all of the collisions. So you can get the number of collisions that happened on the last move and slide call for character body 3Ds like this. And we're going to push all the objects in the direction of the collision normal. So remember a normal for like a wall that's going to be pointing out of the wall. So if we're running into a wall, the normal is going to be pointing towards us. So we want to push whatever we're running into away from us. And we're only pushing rigid body 3Ds. And then what I'm doing here is just getting the player's velocity only in the push direction. And same with the object we're colliding with its velocity only in the push direction. Quick review of what the dot product is for two vectors of length one. If they're pointing in the same direction, it's gonna be one. And then as it gets closer to perpendicular, it will approach zero. And as it gets closer to pointing directly away, it is negative one. And uh, this will work for any two vectors in 2D or 3D. You do the dot product and it returns a single number value. If the vectors are not both length one. It's the same concept, uh, but it's going to be scaled by the length of both of the vectors. So like here, we're going to have A is going to be the speed and B is going to be the push direction. So we're going to get the amount of speed of the player's 
speed in the push direction. So if they're pushing straight on, it's going to be all of their velocity. But if they're pushing, like if they're moving away from the push direction, it doesn't really make sense to push the object with their velocity. And same with if they're moving sideways here. So dot product would be zero. And like the visual intuition of what the dot product does, if you didn't know, is at least um, projecting a vector onto a normalized vector uh, or doing a dot product with a vector and a normalized vector, it projects it. So this is the value of the dot product right here. This uh, kind of translucent orange arrow. Um, and the intuition here is that it's projecting the length on. So like you can see like if this is the velocity, if they're moving really fast this way, it only takes the x component or the component that is in the direction of b for their velocity. And even though they're moving really fast this way, the x component here is, you know, it's going to be zero because they're moving fast this way. And it returns a scalar value. So it's going to be like how, what's the speed just in the direction of b. And this, of course, works for vectors of any uh, direction as long as uh, b is length 1 in this case. So yeah, how we're using that practically here, we're only going to be pushing the object with the player's velocity that's in the push direction. And we want to like, since we're pushing the object, we want to try to get the object up to the speed of the player because it should be like pushing along with it. Uh, but it doesn't really make sense if like we're pushing something to like kick it crazy far. Um, I'm just trying to make this as not error prone as possible. So we're just trying to get the object, the minimal amount possible to increase the speed up to the uh, player's speed in the direction we're pushing. And uh, because it's going to return a single number with negative being the amount of speed away from the push direction. So like if the player's moving away from the push direction, this could be negative. Or if the object is already moving away from the player faster than um, the player's moving, then it doesn't really make sense to add more velocity and it could get glitchy. So I'm making sure we are only adding velocity until the player's velocity and only in the push direction. And it could be like, we could start pulling the object towards us, which wouldn't make sense either if it was negative. So that's what that line does. And then here, I uh, just took like the average weight or so of a human. I looked it up and it said it was around like 80 kilograms or so. So I am doing this uh, approximate mass and then we're getting a ratio with the mass of the object that we we're colliding with. And so this is going to be a, this is going to give us a lower value if the object is like really heavy. So like if it's like 80 divided by an object of like 160 kilograms, that'd be 0 0.5. So we want to make it harder to push. So we'll multiply the push force by a, sm a smaller number. And, but it doesn't really make sense again to like push it faster. Like even if it's like a really light object, uh, like if it was multiplied by like, if, our, if we're like 80 times heavier than it, it doesn't make sense to like kick it with like a force of like insane 80 times velocity. So that's what I do the, I make sure it's no more than just one times the player's velocity that we're gonna be setting the object's velocity to. And then this line, um, I just found it to make it a little bit less glitchy, I think, and we're just not gonna push the object in the Y directions like if we're standing on it. And then we just get this push force and Ordinarily, this would this like logically checks out that we would just want to get the velocity multiplied by the mass ratio, but in reality, it doesn't work out as cleanly because there's other factors like friction, and so just trying to up the velocity by that exact number might not be right. So you might have to adjust this five to to your needs to get it to feel right in the physics simulation, and then we're doing this apply impulse in the direction of that we're pushing, which will be negative of the normal. So that means like if the normal is pointing towards us, like for a wall, negative of it, it's gonna be pointing away from us. So pushing away uh, from the normal, away from us. And then we multiply it by the, the dot product thing we did earlier and how much we need to get the object pushed to push it towards the player's velocity in the push direction. 
And then we're multiplying it by this push force, which is takes into account the mass ratio of the player and the object, and then multiply it by some magic number you might tune to your needs to get it to feel right. And then apply impulse allows you to apply an impulse on an object. So it could be like, like if you're pushing like a lever and you're like standing like far from the center of mass, it would apply the impulse like on the corner or the edge or whatever. And so we are subtracting the collision point by the point or the position of the object we're colliding with. So this is going to get like the relative position of the collision to the collider. And that is all you need. Oh, and then also you are going to need to call this in your physics process and make sure you call it before move and slide. The logic of calling it before is usually you're going to have like your movement code, which will like up your velocity and but when you collide with something after move and slide, like if you hit a rigid body, that's going to be like a wall essentially. And it's going to stop your player uh, ordinarily without this push code. So your velocity is going to get set to zero. Like if you hit something and because this depends on the player's velocity, like we're moving up to the player's velocity, you need to call it before you call move and slide, like after your movement, after you've set the velocity of the player and before you actually run the collisions which will stop the player. So I'm calling it right before move and slide. And now with that, you will be able to push objects and affect them with your character body 3D. They're not just gonna be impassable walls all the time. And you, you're not gonna be able to push objects that are like way heavier than the player. Um, this one is heavier than the player, but it has zero friction. So it's a lot easier to push. And this is an imperfect method. It doesn't work perfectly, but this is a decent solution to get some physics interaction working. And maybe you could tweak or modify this and only enable it for certain objects. And if you needed like more precise code uh, for some physics interaction, like kicking a soccer ball, you'd probably want to program that in by hand because yeah, as you can see here, it is kind of glitchy sometimes. It's not 100% perfect. Even in big budget games, uh, it's really hard to get this right. You can see in this case, weird physics, like I'm walking on top of that uh, grave thing and sliding it. But it looks like they're using like the same basic concept of just kind of applying an impulse at the object's uh, collision point. And you can see a lot of the same jitter that you sometimes get with this method, like some just very slight camera jitter when you're pushing stuff. One thing I will note is I did find this option here in the uh, character body 3D to make it a bit less glitchy, this moving platform. Um, so if you're standing on top of a rigid body 3D, it looks like that can sometimes be considered a moving platform. And if you're pushing it as well, that can get kind of glitchy. So you could either select do nothing. Um, so you're not gonna get the moving objects velocity applied to your character body, or you could move the uh, rigid bodies onto a different layer here and that will also prevent uh, the moving platform to, or the rigid body to not apply its velocity to the player while it's like staying on top of it. And another thing to know pretty much anytime you're working with physics in Godot is that there is an add-on called Jolt. And this is an alternative physics engine for Godot. You can go search it in the asset lib tab if you click up here in Godot and install it. And basically this is an alternative physics engine. I think they're actually going to make it the default physics engine in Godot soon, if I remember correctly. And uh, you'll have to restart your project and enable it. And Godot Jolt is generally thought to be faster, more stable, and in general a higher quality physics engine than the default one. So if you're having issues with physics, sometimes you can just install Godot Jolt and it just fixes it. I've had this happen multiple times where it fixes like really bad lag. I've had it fix really bad lag using the body test motion functions and also really bad lag on height map shapes. And also I found a glitch where it like wasn't detecting whether it was on the floor or not properly on some terrain mesh imported and Godot Jolt just magically fixed that too. So yeah, good thing to know to have as an option. One current downside of it is that I don't think it works on web export at the moment, but I assume they're gonna get that working eventually so it can be the default physics engine for Godot. And so yeah, that is the video. Hopefully it helps somebody. 
And again, if you need like more tuned in physics than this, probably what you would have to do is program in your specific use case and hand tune the physics. Like, uh, I don't know if you need like kicking a soccer ball or doing some physical thing in your game, you might have to like hand program that in or do a bit of a hack or something to like halfway do the physics and kind of fake it or just really specifically program in the exact use case that you want because a lot of what we do in games is kind of hacky i mean after all like the we're not even pushing the body with like our legs or whatever i mean this is just like a capsule pushing against a cube like shape in like a physics simulation so in general it's not going to be completely correct and it's an approximation but yeah thanks for watching rate comment subscribe for more and i'll be adding some more features to this character controller so stay tuned for that